In this video you will learn in a super easy way what is GVT authentication and how we can implement it inside Node.js. So the first question is what is GVT authentication and why do we need it at all? And actually it is the most popular way to authenticate and login user inside your web application. And you can use it both with web applications and with mobile applications. And here is how it works. As you can see we have two different things – client or our browser and server. And the first step here is that our client sends a login request to the backend. Typically it is an API slash login where we are pasting our username and password. Server checks our credentials, checks that this user exists in the database and generates back not only user information but also a GVT token. So as you can see here, creates a GVT with a secret. So what is GVT? This is just a random string which contains some information. So we are getting on the client this GVT token in the response. After this, the goal of the client is to save this data somewhere, for example in a cookie or in local storage, so somewhere where our client can use it later. So later our client is sending requests to the backend and will typically add this GVT token to all the requests. And this is the first step, send a GVT token inside authorization header. So we are adding this GVT token inside our headers. And after this our server gets this request, parses our headers and read the token. And it understands to which user this token belongs by parsing this token. And after this our server will deliver correct information to our client. So this is exactly how GVT token works. But obviously it is super dry and it is not clear. This is why I prepared an example for you, so we can implement the GVT token from scratch in an easiest way. As you can see here, I prepared for you a small project. And we are interested here in two files, server.js, inside node we have an express server and a file db.js. And here I don't have a real database and we don't need it, because essentially it should not matter for you what database we are using, how we authenticate a user, because we implement GVT on top of that. So let's look on our server.js. As you can see I have here quite a lot, but this is just plain express server. So first of all here we have our express server and we have several routes. First of all here we are getting app get slash articles and we are getting here get articles from our DB. As you can see here on the top we are requiring get articles method from our database and we are just sending them back. So let's check if it's working. I have our web server started on the port 3001. Let's open Postman and send request to slash articles. And this is a GET request. I'm hitting here send and we're getting back three nice articles. So what is that? Inside our DBGS we have several methods. As you can see on the top we have some articles which are just defined as an array and our getArticles method simply returns for us articles. Because for us it doesn't matter how this db file implements storing of data or working with the database. After this inside our server.js we have a post request to articles, because we want to create a new article, but we don't have any content inside this function. This is because we will implement it together to make an authenticated request to create an article. After this we have a post to login, where we are loginning our user with request body username and request body password. This is exactly what you saw on this diagram. We have here a post request with username and password. And if after calling this login function we didn't get a user back, then we are throwing an error, in other case we are responding with this user. Let's check what is login method. As you can see this is a function inside our db file and here is how it looks like. So this login is getting username and password and we are just trying to find a user inside an array of users. So what is the array of users here on the top? After our articles we are getting just array of users with id and username. And as you can see here we have a reference between our users and articles. In every single article we have a user id and this is the author of this article. This is exactly how we typically store our information inside the database. 
So what our login method does, it tries to find the user by the username that we provided. And after this, we are checking if our username is correct. And here our password is 123, then we are returning user. If we don't have a user or password is wrong, then we simply return here now. And in the real application, in such login function, you will typically first of all get a user from the database and then check its password. But it is not related to GVT at all, because we are using GVT after getting user information from the database. So let's check if this login function is working. I'm jumping to Postman and I want to make a request to slash login and this is a post request with such information. We have an object with username foo, password123. I'm hitting here send and we're getting back our user with ID and username. This is exactly the only user that we have here on the top. If we are providing here some other information, for example foo123, I'm hitting here send and we're getting incorrect email or password. So our login function is working correctly. So now on top of this small application, we must implement JSON Web Token authentication. How we must do that? The first step here is to tune our login function. As you can see here, we have a nice post to slash login. We are getting some credentials and we are checking here for the user. The main idea is that we must send back not just a user, but also JSON Web Token. This is exactly this step two where we're creating GVT token, which actually means we must jump inside this login function and create here a JSON Web Token. And for this, we must use a library which is called JSON Web Token. So here on the top, I want to create a property GVT and require this library JSON Web Token. And obviously, you must install this library with npm install JSON Web Token. So we're getting here GVT and now we want to use it here inside login function. So after we're sure that we checked a user and we checked it password, we want to generate a token string. This is why after our if condition, I want to generate a token and I want to call here gvt.sign. And this is exactly a function to create a token. And here we're providing two things. First of all, our payload. This is exactly what data we must write inside our token. And typically you want to store inside an ID of our user, because by ID we can always find the user from the token and understand what user send it as the token. This is why here inside payload I want to provide an object with field id and in our case it will be user.id and also we can provide additional username just to understand what user it is without getting it from the database. And now the question is what is a secret? And actually this is any string on the backend which nobody knows. For example, we can write here foo bar bus, and this is totally fine. The main idea is that only with this secret string, our backend can parse this GVT token back. This is why it is completely safe to send GVT to the client, and nobody can understand what user was that. So for your project, it is extremely important that this string stays secret, and nobody ever gets it. In other case, you can leak user information. So here we generated our token and now I simply want to add this token to our response. In this case, we are directly sending after login in this token to our client. Let's check if it's working. I will jump back to the postman and here I will log in with correct credentials. I'm hitting here send and we're getting not only ID and username, but a new token field. And as you can see, this is just a string. As you can see, we implemented step two with creating of our GVT secret and sending it back to the browser. Now, after we responded with this token, our client must save somewhere inside local storage or a cookie this token for the later use. And now we are coming to an interesting point. When our client will send for us correct token, we must parse it, check it, get user information from it, and respond with the correct data. And for this, we will implement this post articles function, and only correctly locked user can create an article. And as you can see here inside DBGS, we already have a function create article, and we expect here to get a title of the article and the whole user. And actually this whole user is not coming from the client, our backend must get it, because here we are using user ID information to create a new article and push it to our array. 
So actually what we could do here inside our post for articles, we can directly from our request read all headers, parse them, then get user information and do some logic. But this is a bad approach. Why is that? Because actually we will need exactly the same code in every single place where we want to authenticate a user. This is exactly why do we want to build authentication middleware. So what is authentication middleware in Express? Before we get into this function, this callback of any route, we can actually call a middleware. And this is just a function in the middle between starting of our request and coming to this function to respond. We can just do there some logic. And this is exactly the place where we want to check if user is logged in, if we need to send for zero one back and he is not logged in, or where we need to parse our JSON web token. This is why let's create now a middleware. So for this, I want to create a new file, which is called auth-middleware.js. And now inside we create just a single function. This is why here module exports. And here we are getting request, response, and next. And next is important here because after our middleware is finished, we are calling next. And then we are saying that our request is ready to be continued to our route function. So first of all, let's check if it's working at all. What I want to write here is console log request headers. And after this, I just want to call a next function because in other case, it won't work. Now let's use the south middleware inside our server JS. First of all, here on the top, we want to get this auth middleware from the file that we just created and it is auth middleware. Now here inside our post for the articles, just before our function, we want to write auth middleware and then comma. And it means that we are calling this auth middleware before we are coming to this function. Let's check if it's working. For this, I want to jump to postman and write here slash articles. And this is a post. And for now, body doesn't matter. I'm hitting here send and we're getting sending request. And this is a pending request because we didn't write inside our function post articles any code with response. This is totally fine. But as you can see here inside our console log, we're getting this object. And this is exactly all our headers that we provided from the client. So what I want to do now, first of all, is write a response. This is why here, let's write res send, for example, foo. And also I want to send some headers that we really need to check. This is why I will jump inside postman, inside headers property. And here we can add a new key, which is called authorization. So here as a key, I will write authorization. And as a value, it must be our token. And just to remind you, I copied the token from our login request. This is why now I will paste it here, which actually means we add it to our headers a new authorization token with such value. Now let's send this request again. I'm hitting send and we're getting full. This is totally fine. And here inside console, we're getting our headers and here we're getting authorization token. And this is exactly the value that we want to get from the client to authenticate our user. So let's use it now. I want to jump back inside our auth middleware and we know that we have our value inside request headers. So first of all, we can try to read it. So here we're getting our auth header and this is request.headers.authorization. If we don't have this header, it means that we are not logged in. This is why here we can say if we didn't get our auth header, we want to return res send status and we are sending for zero one, which means unauthorized. After this, we want to try to parse our token. This is why here on the top, we must require GVT library. So here I am writing require JSON web token and now let's use it. So we're getting here back some data after we are calling GVT verify. And this is exactly what we're using to check our token. So inside our verify, first of all, we're throwing our header and secondly, our secret. And just to remind you here inside our DBJS, inside our login, we had such secret. And I will just copy it. You can obviously put it in some constants and share between two files. But for the sake of testing, I will simply paste it here. So inside the verify function, we are throwing our token and secondly, our secret key, which we know only on the backend and we're getting back some data. 
So now I want to console log what data we are getting and check it in the console. So here let's hit send again. And as you can see, we're getting full, everything is fine. And now inside our data, we're getting an object with ID one, username full, and here is the timestamp, which actually means we successfully parsed our JSON web token. And now we have enough information to get a user. And for this, inside our file dbgs, we have a function at the bottom, which is called getUser. And here we are getting from our array of users a user by ID that we provided inside. And this is exactly how you want to write the code inside the middleware. In the real application, you will make a database request here to get a user by this ID. In our case here, we can simply use the function getUser, and we are requiring here our db file. So here, after getting our data, we can get a user. And for this, we're calling our function get user, where inside we're pasting data.id. So this will for sure get for us a user, because we know that it was a valid token. But if you want to be on the safe side, you can just copy paste this code with if condition. And if you don't get a user from the database, then you just respond with 401. In this case, if for some reason you are not getting a user, you will still be on the safe side. And the last step here that we want to do, we want to update our request so we can read a user later inside our application. And for this, we can simply write request.user equals user. And with this line, we simply updated our request so we can read user information later inside the function. And this is exactly how we implement middlewares inside Express. Now let's jump back inside our server.js because now instead of this resend, we can create an article. This is why here I want to import create article function. Now here, instead of resend, we want to create new article. This is why here, let's create a property article and we're calling here create article function, where inside we must provide first of all request body title, we're reading it from the body and secondly request.user. And just so you fully understand, we're not getting this user from the client. From the client, we simply get a token, but because of this auth middleware, we got the user on the backend, and now we can use it inside our function from request.user. So this single line will create for us new article, and we can just respond with rest send, and here is our article. Let's check if it's working. As you can see, we don't have any errors, and now I want to create a new article. So it must be a post request, and here inside body, we must have just a title property. For example, let's create a title, GVT. I'm hitting here send, and as you can see, this is our response. We're getting here ID 4, title GVT, and user ID 1. So how we got this user ID 1? Let's look inside our create article function. As you can see here, we got the whole user, and typically this will be a user from the database. And here, before we created our article, we wrote inside it a user ID from our user object. And this is exactly how we are doing it inside real production application. And actually, if you're interested to know what is the difference between NPM and NPX inside Node.js, make sure to check this video also.